Whoa! Look what Trump put on the chairs at press conference right after Comey bombshell drops, after the Thursday testimony where former FBI Director James Comey admitted publicly that he had, in fact, asked a friend of his who is a professor at Columbia University to leak the private intel he had gathered on President Donald Trump to the New York Times. The president wasted no time in taking action. President Trump slapped down the lying fake news peddling Mexican citizen Carlos Slim owned New York Times by sending them to the back of the line. They are now, as former President Barack Hussein Obama told the Republicans in 2009, seated in the back of the bus. Say Gabby Moroniello. The White House has put the New York Times in the last row at today's joint press conference with Trump and Romania's president. Former FBI Director James Comey seemed very upset when he said that the actual challenge when writing stories about classified information are that the people talking about it often don't know what's going on. And that those who actually know what's going on don't ever really talk about it. So basically alluding to the fact that the New York Times ran with a story that was not true and they knew it. Of course, the rag that is the New York Times fired back with fury against Comey by stating they stand by their initial story. This isn't the first time the New York Times has published stories which could be considered treasonous or outright lies. They also had a huge hand in the taking down of General David Petraeus, who did only 5% of what crooked Hillary Clinton did when she was Secretary of State under former President Barack Hussein Obama. The New York Post reports, yesterday, the New York Times published another front-page article based on a leaked classified document. This time, it was an order signed by General David Petraeus authorizing black operations against adversaries and such dubious friends as Iran, Syria, Yemen, and Saudi Arabia. Gee, thanks. We really needed to know that. The world's a better place now. Yet the Times sin was the lesser one. The paper has long since given up any pretense of patriotism. Ugh. Yuck. Its editors are just publishing and perishing as citizens of the world. It's whoever leaked the document that bears the burn in hell blame. We must be able to keep secrets in wartime. But we can't. Because domestic political agendas trump national security in every administration nowadays. Exposing that seven-page classified document warned our enemies, and pseudo-friends, that we've expanded our efforts to uncover terror networks and potential targets. This not only increases the virulent paranoia in the region's police states, but poses a mortal danger to agents, special operators, and the innocent. Our bravest men and women will face heightened risks and difficulties in executing their missions and businessmen, tourists and, did the Times think this through, journalists will also come under greater suspicion. Innocent people and regime opponents will be executed as spies. And does anyone think that publicizing this program will help those three hikers held for a year in Iran? In fact, there's a far greater risk of harm to blundering bystanders than to skilled operatives. The Tehran regime, especially, will use the revelation of this document as an excuse to imprison more democracy advocates or kill them. Think the jerk who leaked this order considered any of these consequences? What was the benefit in handing these classified papers to a journalist? It won't help fight terror, save lives, or end a war. The document was handed over in a cynical attempt to score political points. There's no other plausible explanation. Some party hack with a security clearance believed this order would show that the Obama administration's doing something about Iran. The only question is whether this betrayal was the act of an individual, or if it was orchestrated. I'd hang the leaker by the neck, then cut down the body and give it a fair trial but nobody's going to be punished. High-ranking officials can get away with manslaughter, if not murder. An army captain would go to prison. A political appointee can expect a promotion. This disgraceful culture of leaks isn't just a problem with Obama's disciples, of course. The previous administration frequently leaked classified material for political gain. Leaking of classified information has become just one more tool of national politics. Neither party cares a damn about protecting our secrets unless it can score against the other team. As far as the actual Petraeus order goes, it's just the sort of bureaucratic document required by our system to authorize common-sense activities against our enemies. I would have been shocked had the order denied permission to collect intelligence on our enemies and conduct lethal operations on hostile ground.
This is what serious security establishments do. We should have done more of it earlier. The problem with the security breach is that it alerts our enemies. The best black operations employ diversions to draw the enemy's attention to another sphere. You want him looking east, when you're working the west. Publicizing this document shines a spotlight on our efforts. Even the sloppiness of the reporting is offensive. The Times reporter uses the adjectives covert and clandestine interchangeably. Yet they have profoundly different meanings. A covert operation must be kept secret until the mission is accomplished. A clandestine program is meant to remain secret until doomsday, usually to protect sources and methods. But accuracy doesn't matter any more than does our national security. A journalist got a front-page byline. A political hack believes that he or she made President Obama look manlier in dealing with Iran. So what if our agents and special operators were betrayed? People will die or be jailed and tortured because of this leak. And nobody on this end will be punished. Because nobody in Washington gives a damn. As we can clearly see the New York Post needs to be taken down a few notches and President Trump is the man to do it. He won't take the high road like former President Gerald W. Bush did against all these evil media hacks. We wanted a street brawler, we got one. Please share if you support the battle against the fake news mainstream media. Please do not forget like on videos, and subscribe, and comment because your voice matters, and visit our page on Facebook, and like them, and follow up. And thanks for watching.